Okay, so we're looking at the Windows Mixed Reality headset again, and I found something completely shocking about this yesterday. So on top of this headset, it actually says Windows Mixed Reality. Now the surprising thing is that although it's called Windows Mixed Reality headset, it actually does not do mixed reality. Let me repeat that. It does not do mixed reality. So what does that really mean? So first of all, let's go over some terminology. Virtual reality means whatever you see is not real. It's all you know, computer generated. Augmented reality means whatever you see is real, but there's additional information um, that's presented on top of that. So for example, in augmented reality, you look at a book, a real physical book, and it can tell you things like, oh, you know, title of the book, the author, the ISBN number, and so on. So you can think of that as the additional information augments, you know, what's actually there in real reality. Now, what's mixed reality? So mixed reality, reality is you see things that are real, and in addition, you see things that are not there, uh, that are virtual. So how this is a little bit different than augmented reality is in mixed reality, the virtual things, it's more than just, you know, textural information or numbers. It, it tends to be, you know, 3D objects. So that's really what mixed reality is about. It's about seeing things in the real world and, you know, virtual objects sort of mixed together, hence mixed reality. So the reason why I'm focusing on this is um, yesterday I found out that despite the Windows Mixed Reality headset having these two cameras on either side. Um, these cameras are only used for SLAM tracking. So SLAM tracking is simultaneous localization and mapping. So basically this is what allows the headset to know what it's looking at, like direction, orientation, position, and so on. However, the data that is collected by these two cameras are not available for application use. So what that means is I can't actually use pass-through video from these two cameras. They're only there for, you know, position tracking of the headset, the so-called inside out, you know, tracking. So this means that I will not be able to, for example, look at a real book or a real object and then have that video show up in the display in the headset itself. Um, so that's really not mixed reality. I mean, it's very shocking that they would call this product mixed reality when it doesn't do that. And furthermore, they don't plan, at least for this version, to have that capability. So basically, it does not have that capability now, i.e. to actually show video data that's taken through these two front cameras, nor are they planning to make this capability available, at least not this version of the headset. Um, so ultimately, it's very badly named. Now, the reason that was given um, why it's called the Mixed Reality Headset, it's because it's part of the Windows Mixed Reality family or framework. So evidently for the HoloLens, um, there's an existing framework called Windows Mixed Reality, and that same framework also works for this headset. In fact, you know, this headset is just a VR headset. Now, having said that, I'm very disappointed that this is the case. And in fact, I'm thinking about just returning this because it adds very little value because I already have a Rift and a Vive. So what does this bring to the table? Well, it has somewhat better resolution. So I think the resolution on each eye here is 1440 by 1440. And I think for the Rift and the Vive, the resolution is 1080 by 1200 for eye. So it is somewhat better, although it's probably not revolutionary. I think the field of view is also different between this. I think this is only 90 degrees field of view compared to the 110 for the Rift and the Vive. So those two things combined the visual acuity or clarity is probably better on this thing. Uh, but other than that, 
it's not terribly revolutionary. So what else about this, you know, makes it quote unquote better or at least different? Well, it does flip up. So as I mentioned in the, one of the previous videos, it's hinged on the front, so it can actually do this. Uh, why is this useful? Well, if I'm developing or if I'm using a VR application and I have this mounted on top of my head, flipping this up allows me to see the screen and be able to type and so on. It's a nice feature to have. Um, is it super revolutionary? Probably not. So other than this, um, the headband or the head mount is also quite comfortable. In fact, I probably prefer this uh, compared to either the Rift or the Vive. Um, so you just turn the knob and it just tightens and loosens. And like I said, this is a lot more comfortable than the Vive or the Rift. Um, I don't know if the Vive can actually support something like this because the Vive is actually heavier. So without the top strap, you know, maybe it just feels very awkward. But in terms of ergonomics, you know, having this adjustable headband thing, as well as this, you know, hinged visor, okay, those are pretty good features. And the other distinguishing feature is the whole inside out tracking. So as I mentioned before, it's using SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping. So it's these two cameras here side by side um, that basically determines um, the relative position of the headset. Um, so compare that to the, I guess, the outside in tracking for the Vive and the Rift where you have lighthouses, you know, sitting around um, tracking the headset position. So no lighthouses, that's a good thing. But as far as I know, you only have two cameras pointing, you know, in front of you. Um, so for tracking things like motion controllers or position of your hands, um, I think you can only see and track the motion controllers as long as they're in front of the headset. So if you're doing some motion to the side of the headset, the camera can't actually see it. So I don't think it can track. So I think that's a pretty big trade-off because, you know, it prevents you from doing things like waving your arms, you know, to the side of your body, waving your hands above your head, or even, you know, doing some, you know, classic uh, poses where you're drawing a bow, where one of your hands is sort of like behind your ear, or if you're like winding up for a punch and, you know, your fist is like behind your body, but you're looking forward. So I think in those cases, the inside out tracking can't really track so as much of a hassle it is to set up you know the Vive lighthouses or uh, or the Rift lighthouse or whatever the external sensor is called um, at least in those cases it can actually track better than this inside out tracking so having said that um, what am I going to do with this well um, I think I will probably actually return this if I can I think I'm within 30 days, so I should be able to return this just fine, but we'll see. And the reason for that is, one, is this is a development build or a developer edition of the headset. So to me, this is essentially a VR only headset, no mixed reality capabilities. That's basically two years late to the market. Why do I say two years? Well, the Rift and the Vive came out I think around April 2016. Those were consumer versions. This is a developer version. So my guess is by the time this hits the consumer space, we're looking at sometime in 2018. And given the current you know limitations in terms of what it brings to the table, it really doesn't bring any new features I, I care about. And on the flip side, the development cost is very high for this. It took me three days of installing Windows beta versions, effectively, they're called um, Windows Insider Preview Editions. Three days of basically installing Windows, upgrading Windows, reinstalling Windows, and so on, before I could even get the basics of this thing to work. I'm not even talking about developing for this, I'm just talking about the headset actually works and I can, I can actually look at things through it. And I've downloaded Unity 2017 beta, which in theory supports um, 
this headset. Uh, but like I said, without the mixed reality component, I really have very little incentive to actually, you know, spend more time with this thing. It's like slightly be better resolution, a little better, little bit better ergonomics, and a whole lot of development overhead from what I can see. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return this and instead, I'm gonna focus on developing on the Vive, which I've been doing you know, for about a year now. At least with the Vive, although it's not perfect in terms of Steam VR support and whatever, you know, it's much easier to get it running and there's a lot more people working with it. And you know, support for it in general is a lot better than this thing. So, so there you have it. I'm actually very disappointed in this because I thought, you know, I was going to be able to use the pass-through video capabilities here to do something interesting <coughs> with mixed reality, but ultimately, ultimately, I think it's a failure. I mean, it's a very misleading name to call it Windows Mixed Reality Headset when it doesn't do it, and it just brings very little to the table. So, very disappointed, and uh, hopefully, uh, the return policy will be very straightforward. So, until next time. Thank you.